your website is literally called Womb Manifesting. And you hear about manifest, but I I guess I didn't realize that it was so embedded in these cultures that like, you know, African culture has all of these rituals that are similar to to this. So yeah, I mean, can you speak on that? Because when we learn about manifesting, uh, you might agree that it is whitewashed, the type of spirituality we're exposed to, at least in America. So I have no idea about the like spirituality, cult, you know, that culture in other areas of the world. So can you just lay, you know, share some insight on that? Absolutely. I had an experience with one of my spiritual teachers who was in the, he's in the Akan culture and he is based in Ghana, West Africa. And he was talking, we were talking about manifesting. And he was giving me a very specific ritual that involved a tree and involved assuming that, you know, the, the, how the, the assuming that the that what you wanted was going to appear and going to the tree and doing and I and I said, Oh my gosh, you're talking about manifestation. And he said, no, I'm talking about being, I'm talking about creating. Wow. And I was like, yeah, but you're talking wow. about manifestation. It was all the same yeah. thing, but it was a different language, yeah. you know, a different way oh of relating, gosh. relating it. And it is all the same. Like there's a lot of, you know, for example, what is called trance in a lot of um, West African um, nations call it trance, that it's meditation. You know, it's visualization. Yeah, there is yes. a, in Zulu culture, there's a consciousness that is called Umbilini consciousness that is very much with the same as, um, very similar to Kundalini that is, you know, in Hindu culture. And I think that it's because the greats, you know, the, the, the ancients were all pulling from the same, you know, the same energy stream. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, this is all very, very much, very much a part of African culture, global African culture. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this project, because I have been the beneficiary of, I benefit from many different cultures. Like I just mentioned, Hinduism, you know, with chakra work and, you know, yoga and, you know, um, with Taoism and with, you know, um, so much, so much, so many different other cultures with feng shui, you know, so many different cultural gifts that I benefit from. And so when people say, oh, well, can I read this book if I'm not African? I say, absolutely. Because, you know, for all of us to receive the gifts that we are needing, you know, from each other is a beautiful part of our human journey and experience. I love that message. I agree that this needs to go out to more people because I don't, it's, it's not exposed. You know, people don't realize, I, I mean, at least for me, I have not heard that much in African spirituality. Yeah. And I love how you explained it. It's all, t it's all the same. It's coming from the same source, yeah. but in different languages, yes. you know, the, the me different <laughs> messengers in different languages throughout time. That's a beautiful, beautiful idea. It is. Um, it is. And I just yeah. want to just add, Eileen, that, you know, it's not accidental that you haven't heard this, that my mm -hmm. one of the things I did not know about my father's experience growing up until I interviewed him for the book is that when he was growing up in British Guiana at the time, which is now Guyana, you know, that African spirituality was illegal. And so oh there gosh. were raids I didn't know that. where, you know, they had to hide their altars, hide their candles, hide ah. their drums. This is in my father's lifetime. So this is not, wow. you know, I knew that this had happened, but yeah. I thought it was like some ancient thing. I didn't know that this was my father's wow. experience in his lifetime. And it was the same very much um, through throughout um, colonialized Africa on the continent as well, you know, where... And, and in the United States, where African spirituality was permanently demonized. And so we think of, you know, things that are evil and bad and all of that stuff. And, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't by accident. <laughs> 